this guy I'm replying to has some very interesting things to say about the landmark form and um, and what kind of uh, what the results are of uh, teaching one thing using a certain set of techniques to do it um, you know what really continues to bother me about this is that there's this huge multi hundred billion dollar industry in this human potential self-help area and I and I have nothing against the self-help, uh, you know, industry, and I think it's a good idea. One thing this guy says, and another, no, no, not this guy, but a different guy, was that, you know, he just didn't like that it cost five hundred bucks to to get abused. He he would have rather just spent twenty bucks on a self-help book and maybe got a few ideas, take it a little more casually, you know. And that's why I have no problem, even though I think most of the self-help stuff is bullshit. You know, people can get stuff out of it and little heuristics and ideas and. And, and they're trying to improve themselves, so, you know, that compensates for a lot of the, the bullshit somebody's trying to improve. And the, the fact that people consume so many different of these little magic pills, that, that makes it more healthy than if you just consume what. But, um, but it bothers me, they're just, you know, why are people doing this? What are they hoping to get out, and what is the quick fix, you know? And I was thinking about problems. You know, I know in one thing uh, that uh, I think uh, maybe it was this guy. No, I forget. I've watched a lot of these things. Somebody said was uh, the one thing that appeals is this idea that words create possibilities. You know, that just stating a possibility and living a possibility makes an actuality. And there's sort of a coincidental truth to that. You know, but words are not the magical power. Uh, that that's been proposed. It's a very cognitive, very material process. But there's a way to sidestep our problems, and it comes from the fact that, you know, we make problems, we invent problems. Okay, we you know. Now I'm just going to adjust the words. I'm not changing the words. I'm just going to adjust so that we think about what's really going on. We have a problem. We want to change something you know, so-called solve a problem. We really we have an unacceptable situation that we want to change. The problem is something invented. And I'll tell you, for example, what I mean. You know, a train leaves St. Louis bound for Chicago going 100 miles an hour at 10 p.m. It's 300 miles, you know. When will it reach the midpoint? Well, that's not a problem. There's not really a problem in the train or with the real world. It's... The problem in this case is a you know, typical math word problem invented by a math teacher. And why? What does it do? You can see that you don't have to see uh, this train leaving at a certain speed as is a problem. And what do you gain by seeing it that way? Well, you get something that if you solve, you'll get more information about the situation. That's what problems really are. We create a problem because we want to understand the situation better. So we see it as a problem so we can solve those problems and get more information, you know, about the situation. Now, if we make this situation more like what we traditionally would consider, you know, a real problem, um, we could say there's a train leaving Chicago bound for St. Louis on the same track. You know, suddenly that information that you get about the situation is not just when a train's going to reach its midpoint, it's when two trains are going to collide. Okay. So we create a problem, we visualize a problem, so that we can solve the situation. You know, take something more real world. Let's say you have a friend that's abusing you, they hit you. You know, if you picture the problem as your friend's anger management issue, then that's what you're trying to solve. You're trying to get more information about their anger management problem so that you can change that situation. If you view the situation as, well, you're too weak-willed to uh, you know, cease being friends with them, then you're going to be trying to get information more about yourself and why you're reacting this way. And that's, that's the part of the situation you're going to change. Okay, so, you know, this opens up a, a way to sidestep problems, right? Which is this apathy. You know, if you just don't care about solving particular parts of the problem anymore, or if you face that you're trying to solve a part of the problem that you also have to face, you can't solve. You know, you can always sidestep a so-called problem by just visualizing it differently as not a problem. That part's not a problem, you know. 
their behavior isn't a problem. I'm going to leave them and figuring out how to do that. You know, that becomes a problem. And so, uh, you know, if you just give up on something, it's, you know, changing some part of the situation, then you can emotionally free yourself from the worrying about changing the situations. Now, in skepticism, you know, the advice is that you accept things the way they appear to be, the way they, they are as far as you know, and that this is how you'll get inner peace. And this is one of the ways of doing it. Just ex accept it. If somebody is abusing somebody else and you see it, you know, you could try to fix that situation or you could realize, hey, I'll just stop seeing it. I'll walk away. So the problem with these quick fixes is that they, they advise, you know, giving up on the real situation, looking at everything only and is its emotional impact to you, and there's quick ways to resolve that emotional impact, but you also become a mindless drone if you do that. But it really is true that problems are in the mind. We invent them. You know, we can describe situation with words. We can make word problems out of the words. We can solve them, get more information about the situation. And this is the process whereby we are motivated to see things as problems. It's kind of like, you know, in a sense, evolutionarily, we have chosen, or our biology has chosen, of course, people deny that it really was a choice, but it, it, evolution has produced a situation where we want to be able to feel pain. We don't want to actually experience and feel the pain. But if there is a situation damaging us, we want to interpret that as pain. You know, if there is a situation that is unacceptable to us, we want to interpret that as a problem. You know, we want to see that as a problem that we then can struggle to solve. So, um, so I don't think we should just discard our problems. We should understand that we're creating them and make sure that in any given situation, uh, we've chosen to see it as a problem that one we can do something about to solve and um, two that the solution it inspires is uh, is actually the one uh, that that potentially gives us information about how to affect the situation in a way that is acceptable